the unique pact with sun Saida was a cheerful young girl who lived in the village of Balrampur she lived with her mother in a tiny hut for the past several months Saida's mother Rahima had been ailing she complained of painful joints body ache and weakness continuously her cough and fever refused to subside several physicians treated her but to no avail rahima showed no signs of improvement a few times when she did she soon relapsed into her old self physicians had confined her to a small dingy airless room that had little sunlight filtering in Rahima had not known fresh air for months. She was under strict orders to remain there. In a few weeks, Rahima's condition became critical. Her relatives and neighbors persuaded her to consult a specialist even though his fee was likely to be very high. Life is more precious than money, they said. Rahima was very poor, but she heeded their advice. She sold off the few trinkets she owned to pay the doctor's fee. and bear the cost of the medicines he would prescribe dr abu came when he was summoned he examined rahima and prescribed effective but costly medicines he also advised her to take a nutritious diet eat all that you can chapati vegetables milk fruits etc more importantly he added empathetically leave this dark hovel and move into a bigger room with doors and windows open sit in the sun every morning from 8 to 9 sunshine and fresh air he concluded are more important than this medicine are more important than this medicine i have prescribed for you the doctor and his advice became a subject of noisy commentary among relatives and neighbors there were many who opposed it exposure to sun and air for someone afflicted with chronic cough was dangerous an experienced lady declared a younger neighbor nearly quarreled with her over this too exhausted to participate in the debate rahima remained quiet but was determined to follow the doctor's advice forget the consequences she said at last i'll carry out his instructions to the letter move my bed into the next room and let me sit in the sun on my charpoy for an hour daily I do not want to give the wise doctor a reason to complain after all he is more learned than all of you The next two days turned out to be cloudy ones with an overcast sky The sunshine that Rahima craved so badly for was hardly there Rahima was dejected she muttered Oh lord of mine why have you ordered the sun to remain hidden how will i ever be cured Saida was playing with her doll nearby. She heard her mother's lament. Later in the afternoon, when she stumbled on a spot of pale sunshine in the courtyard, she ran to her mother to say that the sun was there. "No, no," said everyone present. "It's too late and chilly. Your mother can't sit out there." Disheartened, Saida returned to her doll. There was no sun really, except for its last remnant entangled in the top branches of the family mango tree children are special messengers of god innocent to the core they have a way a secret language unknown to grown ups through which they fluently communicate with trees flowers animals the sun and the moon perhaps even with the almighty saida addressed her request to the departing rays of the sun Dearest sister, do come tomorrow with lots of warmth and brightness. You see, my mother is ill and needs your help. Surely, answered the light. Don't look unhappy. We'll be here at the fixed hour. Next day, early in the morning, when the sprightly sun rays embellished themselves upon earth, the sun said, "It's our day off again." We are staying up here. The road to earth is blocked by an army of thick dark clouds. The little rays so much wanted to go down to meet Saida, but they remained quiet. One of them though, who had made a pact with little Saida, said, "Dear son, I am sorry, but I really can't stay back. 
I've given my word to Saida. Her mother is very ill and needs my help. I'll pierce through the clouds to reach Saida's courtyard. How else will her mother be cured? Hearing this, all the race nearly staged a revolt against their father, the son. Fancy staying back again? They said in a single voice. What will the people of the earth say about us? That we of the heavens have turned liars? The son relented hesitantly. Suit yourselves, he said. Mind your clothes though. The clouds look dirty to me. Never mind our clothes. We can always change. But go we must. And the rays rushed towards the earth. The clouds stood guard between them and Saida's courtyard. The little rays focused their heat and they had enough of it on a battalion of clouds. The clouds had to flee. The rays got through, shouting past the bewildered clouds. Alas, they were late. Saida was there in the courtyard, waiting for the rays stop arrived since morning. She wore a dejected look on her face. When she saw the rays, her heart leapt with joy. She jumped with delight. Amma, Amma, the rays are here. Come out. The old lady's eyes welled up with tears of gratitude. Her charpoy was placed in the courtyard and she sat on it for an hour, reclining her aching head against thick bolsters. It had been months since she had felt the sun on her hands and face and breathed in fresh air. She thought she was in a new world. Though pale, her face glowed and her eyes shone bright. She saw her child too bathed in sunlight and kissed her. The morning air brought in a new fragrance from nearby flowers. The birds chanted a new tune. Saida's mother felt better already. She is fully recovered now, but she still follows the doctor's advice. An hour of sunlight and lungfuls of fresh air. Every day. The Unique Pact with Sun